I was not a uh, high school graduate. I actually had my first son, I was 16, and then I had my daughter when I was 19. I dropped out of school with my first son, and then right before I had Alyssa, um, when I was 19, I got my GED. Kind of always wanted to go to college and get a higher education, and my family expected it out of all the grandchildren. They thought, you know, for sure that I was going to be the one, but um, I didn't. I lived up to the standards of the black sheep of the family. So, um, getting out of prison, I did get uh, employment with Goodwill, loved my job, and then decided that I just, I just, you just know, you know, when, when God is telling you or calling you to do something, you, you just know. And it's usually not something, at least for me, that I, I want to do. It's hardly ever anything that I want to do. And it's like, are you kidding me? This does not even make sense. So I was obedient, quit my job, <laughs> and went back to school. I will be finishing with um, Austin Community College, and then I plan on, ultimately my goal is I would like to get a master's in theology. But if that lines up with God's plan, great. If not, then I'm just kind of open to what he has in store for me. And I was actually thinking of looking into Peloton U, because this is just an associate's, so through them, to my understanding, you can get a bachelor's degree. And it's designed for um, working individuals, so you kind of, it's not make your own schedule, but they're, it's, it's flexible, and it's designed for, you know, working adults. So I just figured that that would be um, a good option for me and my family at this time. While I was working at Classic Toyota, I had decided that I wanted to pursue an education. I had a lot of courses already, basic courses from when I was in nursing school, and I knew I wanted to go into the helping profession. And so I started back to school at Tyler Junior College, and I pursued a degree in addiction counseling. And, you know, I filled out all the paperwork with that. I don't believe I ever had to pay anything for school. I was eligible for Pell Grant money. I did, however, take out one of the student loans. And so it was helpful for me just, and it was a security, just to know, because I only have me to depend on. You know, I wasn't dependent on anyone else to pay my way. And so I wanted to have that money in the bank just in case I needed it. And uh, what a blessing it was just to be able to turn that back over to the lender and pay that off fully. I graduated in May of 2014 with my degree in addiction counseling. I had done my practicum studies at the East Texas Crisis Center. It's a battered women's shelter and I'm a survivor of domestic violence. So that was something that I was very interested in is helping women there. and. From East Texas Crisis Center, I applied for an intern program at La Hacienda uh, in Kerrville, Texas, and it was amazing. The people at La Hacienda took me in. They did not, they looked at my background. This is wonderful. They looked at my background as a plus. And not as a liability. Um, Wow. Yeah, I think coming out of prison, we have all of these, um, we have all of these uh, coverings over us of what we think that uh, life is gonna be like. And, and you know, it's just been my experience that living clean and sober and living for the Lord, that none of that stuff that people say is gonna happen to us, it's just not part of my story. <laughs> it's just not part of my story. I worked at La Hacienda for almost three years. I loved my training there. It's a, the, you know, Dr. the Boons who worked there. We have a, a full detox hospital. So I received the best training. Uh, Dr. Phil sends his inter used to send his interventions there. I'm not sure if he still does, but you know it was a it was an amazing it was an amazing experience to be in the Hill Country working at a world renowned treatment center. I did a lot of reading while on the inside because I knew I wanted to have a better start um, coming home because I had a small business, but of course it was not going to be there when I got back, so that was no income. And plus, I wanted to make sure that my kids could still 
get a good education. So um, I read a lot of books about that. Now, as for classes, I did have some that were required. Some was concerning my uh, temperament. So they, I would call them anger management cognitive classes that helped me to think slowly or more slower than I used to so I wouldn't make haste decisions. Um, even on the inside, I did learn how to slow things down, but I came home running, so I took some classes that kind of got me back on course because I realized that I could not make up for things that I missed, so I needed to stay focused on doing just what I can do daily. I did take a budgeting class. I took a, um, through, uh, a resource program through Dallas Housing because they help you with fixing your credit. Um, it helps you with saving, managing your money. They help you come up with a plan if you're starting over with, like with finding residency. So of course you need money and credit. So learning how to budget was key and those classes were free and available so I took them. Um, but uh, some of those were voluntarily. Then I went back to college and took some classes. So I learned some computer skills that did include learning how to use a spreadsheet, which kind of did some of the numbers and it kind of helped me put some of that all together. So when I was released from incarceration, I knew that I had a student loan. And so I wanted to get right standing with that because I knew that they would begin garnishing my income tax. Because when I went in, it was probably around 3,000, but when I was released, with all the interest that was racked up, it came out to a little bit over $6,000. And so, I had had that student loan. I was like, I just really need to get rid of this student loan because it's been on me for a long time. So I began making payments and I've paid off quite a big chunk in it so that they don't garnish my check because they can take a lot of money out of your paycheck and they will garnish your, your income tax. I know when I came home, um, the total I needed to pay was like 5,600. And I know compared to some of my friends that have gone, gotten like student loans and everything out here, that is nothing. I know some friends that would gladly trade places with me, you know? And so just, um, again, just because that is part of my parole, just be upfront with your parole officer and they don't require you to pay the whole thing off at one time. And they will work with you on paying off just as much as you can a month. I would just encourage anybody to get as much education as you can and make the best use of your time out there because I got a business, a bachelor's degree in business administration and um, I'm now an assistant manager of a retail store, you know? So, I mean, it does help. It does come in handy, you know? So I would advise anybody to get any kind of education they can in there. I grew up where uh, I couldn't get the education uh, like I wanted it. I um, kept getting pulled out of school several times to stay home keeping children and stuff like that. So I didn't get the education like I should have had. So when I went to prison, uh, I learned so much in prison. Uh, I went from this class to this class, to that class, to class. I mean, I, it was some, I, I, I didn't understand why I got sent back to prison, but then I understood in the long run, I understood why I went back. It's time to change. You know, it is time to change. We can't keep entering and back into the prison walls back and forth while they make the money and we losing the time with our families, with our, uh, the fellow man that needs to know uh, what we didn't know. And now we are, I'm telling you, prison teach you a lot. If you take time and not, because I'm telling you, in prison, there is still the people on the street in prison, and they are still riding in that same type of way. They are still living in that same type of way. So you have to set boundaries even in prison, you know, and if you want something out of life, you really want to change, you're going to go, you're going to go there. That means you starting from the education, you starting from the uh, going in these classes. If you have a drug problem, you're going to go in these drug classes. If you want to change where you've been abused, you're going to go in an abuse class, you know, and you're going to start uh, uh, trying to 
get to where you trying to come away from. So someone is gonna teach you these things and you, it's best to always listen. Shut your mouth. Just shut your mouth and listen because the more you talk, you're not gonna never learn nothing. But the more you listen, the more you learn. And I needed to be in prison. I thank God for sending me back. I kept wondering why I kept going. But now I know why I kept going, because it's things that I was not getting because I was still living like that. I was still dealing with all those peoples. And when I, that last time of going and God allowed, God's put me in that faith based on, you have to look at what God is trying to do with you, not what, you, what he trying to do with this person over here or, and or none of that. It's about you, what he trying to do with you. Maybe if, if, if he trying to teach you for you'll be able to help someone else in there, fine. But otherwise, don't go in there trying to change them people. Go in there and try to see what God is trying to do with you. Because at first, I didn't know what God was trying to do with me. But then I started seeing it. He wanted me to know who he were, not the one that my parents them taught me. Because the one that my parents them taught me I was gonna to go to hell anyway. That's the way I looked at it. But now I know where I'm going. I'm going to see paradise. I don't know about y'all. <laughs>